Oh, that scared him. Happy Friday, Junior. It's your girl, Kat and Gussie. And today I'm gonna show you a process of how I made these bright watercolor florals. How I made these bright watercolor florals using my new and already well-loved Gangzai Tambi uh, watercolor set by, by Kurei Kure Take. I probably butchered that. Um, but it was in my haul video and somebody asked to see more of it because it wasn't that great of um, a swatching. So you'll get the full swatch, the full shebang, how I use it here. I always like to start out in my sketchbook and, and this helps to just loosen up your hands and kind of plan out what you're going to draw. So I will just doodle some flowers. You can always Look online for some inspiration. Don't copy, always take inspiration. Some of these flowers that I'm drawing are real flowers and some of them are from my imagination, but these are kind of stylized, more cartoony and less of that loose watercolor um, effect that I've been showing on my channel. So if you're interested in more loose style watercolor florals, you can check that out like right here, probably. I'm gonna draw a rose and a rose just kind of starts out with squigglies, I think. So I'm just going to show you here and they kind of overlap. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just playing in the sketchbook to um, loosen up. And the nice thing about drawing florals is that they can be super imperfect because flowers in nature aren't really perfect. Things in nature aren't really perfect, but that's kind of the charm of them, why they look so good. Side facing um, peony. So from here, probably start with the, the base of it and go with the center, which kind of looks like an oval with some jagged edges on the top and kind of just build up from there, from the petals. And you just wanna basically build up basic shapes. And to make sure that your flowers are staying round or the right shape, you can just also start with a circle and to make sure that all your petals are reaching the same size all the way around the center. You can start out with that. I'll show you some of the sketches that I do before I get started. This one I did in bed just to, in bed, just to plan this out. And I just wanted to make like a bouquet composition. So I started in the center and kind of worked my way out diagonally. And the nice thing about working in your sketchbook before you go onto your nice watercolor paper is that it, you can plan things out and say, if you don't like this section, you can just kind of go over it. Because it's spring and it's nice and bright, I want to go with like greens, some yellows and pink. Make sure that your brush is clean. I have a bad habit of just leaving my watercolor brushes like half clean and then putting them back away. And then I'll go dip into another color of paint and it's like, makes like a really ugly color. What I really like about these, um, this set is that they can become really opaque and kind of act like gouache. And I actually used gouache in these paints here, but I forgot it. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make it work with just this set and show you how you can layer your paints to make an effect like this. So I always plan everything here first, so I'm not wasting good paper. You can see how creamy that is right off the bat. And I usually, don't work straight out of the pan because then it's hard to control how much water I have. So I will always put it in a ceramic dish like this. You can use a plate, um, but I like this because it keeps all my colors contained. Right, almost hot neon pink. And I'll tone it down with some white. And you can see that my white is very well loved. And the nice thing about watercolor pans is that you can just take a bit of water with your, um, paper towel and just wipe off the dish so that you can get to the pure white pigment that's not tainted by the other colors. So I don't mind going in and mixing through here. And now I can access the nice white, clean white to make this pink a little bit more pastel and softer. And I kind of want to shift this more peach. So I'm going to add some yellow. peach tone here and then I want to go in with a yellow. This yellow is called cadmium yellow. And once this layer has dried cuz I want to make these I want to make these details here darker with a gouache, but of course I'm not I don't have gouache with me. Um, but the 
the salesperson at the art store said that you could use this set like gouache um, by adding less water to your paint to make sure that I can make the details that I want stand out. I'm gonna use for leaves, so I wanna make sure that I have another green on top to layer nicely and maybe a darker green like this one, a hooker's green. No, this is called sap green deep. And I'm using this rose matter deep. This kind of has like a more cool shift to it. So you can see that it kind of leans, I don't know, cool, not warm. So those are the colors that I think I'm gonna use. I don't know, I might change it as I work. So I started here in my sketchbook, mapped out my colors and just tested to see what I think would go well together before I go in with my watercolor paper. So next, I've already drew out my arrangement and you can't see it on camera because I use a really light pencil. Um, that way it doesn't show up in the final piece. My pencil markings don't show up as prominently on my final piece. I'm using uh, Arches 140 pound cold press paper from a large sheet and I just ripped it with a ruler down to this size. This is why I'm using a dish um, is that I can so that I can control my water and how dark it appears on my paper. And if you want a full list of supplies like the paper that I'm using, the brushes that I'm using, down in the description box below. I'm using a round brush like this so that I can get a really nice fine tip for the detail because some of these flowers, I'm painting the flower petals individually so that they do not, because if they touch, they will bleed into each other. I want there to be like a little bit more variation in color, so I'll probably do like rose matter deep with that lighter, with a lighter version of it, maybe a pink, just to have a little bit more detail. Oh yeah, I gotta show off my ham sweater. So um, my studio sisters slash my real life cousins and role models have a podcast here on YouTube, also filmed at Studio Luma. Um, I'll leave a link to their podcast below, but they just got these really cool merch and uh, I highly recommend. Really soft, great quality. And the podcast themselves, um, the podcast itself is just amazing. They share, um, they talk, they interview really interesting people and they're millennial moms and uh, yeah, and they're just like really down to earth and hilarious. So I recommend checking them out. So now that that one layer is dry, I can actually paint beside it because if I don't let it dry, it will run into each other. And I think that makes a really pretty effect, but that's not really what I'm going for here. I think with all paintings, there's like an ugly phase that you gotta work through. And I really struggled with that. Yeah, I struggled with, I struggle with perfectionism. So when things start to get ugly, I panic. And I'm like, nah, like let's just throw it out. Um, but with gouache, and I think especially with watercolor, like you need to work in layers and there's gonna be like horrendous bits. But like if you work through it, and um, yeah, it'll, it'll, it will turn out. So if you're looking at this right now and you're like, Kat, that's ugly, um, just stick with it, <laughs> keep going. I promise. You can see how this watercolor set is just so rich and has so much pigment. I really like working with it. And if you're out looking for a watercolor set to get started with, I highly recommend the um, Kore Take set. They're amazing. So I've been doing this 100 day project where it's like this international project, I guess, creative project where people are committing 100 days to their creative 
craft, whether it's like painting or photography. Some people are making dance videos every day. You can find the hashtag, hashtag the 100 day project to see what everybody is working on. I mean, it's kind of a chore to sit down and try to paint something every single day, but it's taught me that um, just committing to something and spending time, if you're trying to get better at say painting or photography, the only way you're gonna get better at it is if you actually sit down to do it. Like you will get better at it and you'll come up with unexpected things even if you don't really feel like doing it. Every time you sit down to paint, it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be nice. And you just gotta let kind of the ugly pieces of art go and just move on. All right, now you're gonna wanna make sure that everything is dry, like your first layer is dry, but not cool to touch, before you go in with your detail um, layer. Um, and to do these details, I'm using this liner brush. Um, it's a Princeton number zero liner brush, so you can see that it has like a really fine tip, and this is just gonna help um, make those smooth lines. I will test it out on my paper. I don't want it to be too um, wet, otherwise it'll look like watercolor. I want it to kind of look inky and painterly. Um, alternatively, if you don't have a set like this and all you have is watercolor and you have some, maybe you can go in with marker or acrylic paint or pencil crayon. I think that would look really cool to bring the detail of your painting out. Cool, that was that. Now I'm done. <laughs> I never know how to wrap these up properly, but I hope that gave you a better idea of how these Japanese watercolor set by Kore Take work. Um, you can use them as watercolor and then go in with them thicker to make some gouache details. And I, I think it was, um, it, it held up. Um, if you want to paint this yourself, again, I'll leave the link down below to a download coloring page of this guy. What else should I say? If you want to see more of me, you can catch my videos every 
single Thursday right here on Friday Junior, or you can catch me on Instagram at hey, it's Friday Junior. Are we done? I think we're done. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye. 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 Bye.